Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. There's a mathematical story you might have seen, and I want to share some of the headlines. Physicists find a new way to represent pi. Physicists accidentally discover a whole new way to write pi. Indian physicists untangle new pi series that could change maths forever. Researching quantum theory, physicists stumble on a new way to represent pi. New formula provides easier way to extract pi from calculations involved in deciphering processes such as quantum scattering. Wow, so what does this all mean? I know your time is valuable, so let me get to the point for those who feel the video is too long and didn't want to watch it. One main point is that Indian physicists studying string theory have accidentally discovered a new formula for pi. This is the formula. While this is a new way of looking at pi and doesn't have any current practical applications, it could inspire future applications. So why is this formula important? To give a little bit of perspective, we need to go back to the history of pi computation. I'm then going to explain where the formula came about, and I'm going to go through a few of the mathematical aspects of it. So to get started, pi is a concept that relates the circumference of a circle C to its diameter D. It is specifically the ratio of the circumference to the diameter and its constant for all circles. One of the earliest estimates of pi comes from Archimedes circa 250 BCE, and what he did is he thought about estimating the length of the circumference by overestimating it with a circumscribed polygon and underestimating it with an inscribed polygon. He used a 96-sided polygon and he came up with the estimate that pi was approximately 3.14. About 500 years later in China, Lu Hui, and then later Zhu Chongqi, pardon my pronunciation, I never learned this in school, I'm just going from what I read, they used an adaption of Archimedes' method which actually involved areas instead of lengths. Through a series of clever calculations, they came up with an approximation that pi was approximately 3.14159. This was the most accurate pi approximation for nearly 1,000 years. Eventually, this geometrical method reached its limit. So the next phase of development came in about 1350 in India by Madhava, and he came up with the first infinite series for pi. This is such a beautiful formula. Pi over four is equal to one minus one over three plus one over five minus one over seven and so on. Madhava shattered the previous calculation record and got pi to somewhere between 10 to 14 digits of accuracy. Now all the mathematicians who care about every single detail and every single word I say are not so picky about how things are named. This may be known in literature as the Leibniz series, which was discovered hundreds of years later, but you know that it came from Madhava first. Now the current record for pi is based off the Chernovsky algorithm, which is based off of Ramanujan's pi formulas. And this is a kind of formula that looks something like this, and this can get pi accurate to so many digits. The current record is something like over 105 trillion digits. So there's a long history of computing the digits of pi. Where does the new study fit in? The new paper is Field Theory Expansions of String Theory Amplitudes that was published in the Physical Review Letters. The two scientists, Arnab Priya Saha and Aninda Sinha, were motivated by quantum field theory to come up with a new formula to calculate certain things faster. So one of the equations in the paper is this equation. You don't have to understand it, but what they did in the appendix is say that if you substitute particular values, S1 equals minus one half equals S2, and then you substitute those values in, you end up with a formula that pi is equal to the following. So in order to actually compute pi from this formula, let's go back to this first formula at the top. I want to explain some of the mathematical terms. So here we have one over n factorial. So n factorial will be the product of the whole numbers less than that number. So for example, four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one, which equals 24. 
7 factorial will be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 5,040. And in general, for a whole positive number n, we have n factorial is equal to n multiplied by n minus 1, going all the way down to 1. We, of course, have the exception that 0 factorial is equal to 1. That's a topic for another day. So the factorial function is only defined on whole numbers. So if you were to make a graph y is equal to x factorial, it would just have certain points. You would have 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 6, and so on. At some point, mathematicians wondered, is there a way that we could connect the points in some smooth way that would satisfy other properties? And that was the motivation for the gamma function, which appears in this equation three times on the left-hand side. The gamma function is defined by the following integral. And for certain whole values of positive numbers, we have gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. So the gamma function will connect through all of these points, and it will also allow us to have fractional values, and we can also calculate negative values. So what are some particular interesting values of the gamma function? We can calculate it from this integral representation. So most famously, gamma of 1 half is equal to the square root of pi. Gamma of 2 is equal to 1. So there's one more piece of notation in this formula that we need to go over. And here we have a parentheses with a subscript of n minus 1. This is to indicate something. It's written in the paper. So we have parentheses a subscript b, which will be equal to a ratio of gamma functions. They'll be equal to gamma of a plus b divided by gamma of a. So now we're ready to go from this formula to the formula for pi. If we substitute s1 is equal to s2 is equal to minus 1 half, and then carefully simplify, we end up that pi is equal to the following. And what's interesting about this new formula is it connects to the history of pi computation. If you take this formula and take the limit as this parameter lambda goes to infinity, and then you divide the entire thing by 4, you end up with the mod of a series for pi. Pi over 4 is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7, and so on. The mod of a series in its basic form like this is unfortunately not a good way to compute pi. It takes 5 billion terms of computation just to get 10 digits of pi correct. Now, I did mention that Madhva himself calculated pi to something to 10 to 14 digits. So he didn't use this formula alone. He used a modification of it. And you can view this new formula as a modification with a parameter lambda. So we can take a value for lambda. So let's say we say that lambda is equal to 10. Now, we have an infinite series here. So in the original Madhva formula, you would need a billion terms just to get a few accurate digits of pi. So instead of summing up an infinite number of terms, we'll take an approximation and just truncate at 30 terms. Now, all of these functions are built into spreadsheets. So you can actually just use this formula and come up with your own estimate for pi. With lambda is equal to 10 and n is equal to 30, we get an accurate value of pi to 10 digits. We only needed 30 terms to get pi to 10 digits. But we're not done yet. We can vary the parameter lambda. If we put in lambda is equal to 50, the same sort of calculation will get us one more digit of pi. So it just took a few terms to get pi this accurate. This formula itself uses the gamma function, which isn't that efficient for calculation. But nonetheless, it illustrates a quick convergence for pi which is something you can even do in something as simple as a spreadsheet. So it's quite amazing that physicists studying string theory were able to come up with a new way to represent pi that has never been seen before. Who knows what discoveries are waiting out there? Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.